All right. This is, uh, I guess, the first segment of like an interview type style uh, for This Week in Mormons that I'm going to try out where we bring some interesting people on uh, to, to talk and, and explore their story and their experience in the Latter-day Saint Mormon universe. And uh, today we're bringing in on a, a non-Latter-day Saint, Jeff McCullough. How are you, Jeff? Great. Thanks for having me. Now, you run the platform Hello Saints. Uh, for those not familiar with Hello Saints, uh, how do you describe it? Uh, Hello Saints is uh, a channel on YouTube that I'm basically allowing people to come with me on this journey. Um, I am an evangelical Protestant pastor and have had no idea anything about Latter-day Saints pretty much my entire life until the past couple of years. So I'm kind of chronicling my journey of what I'm learning and at the same time, you know, as I learn, I'm sharing my perspective on things from a Protestant viewpoint, and it's just a, an incredible journey so far. Yeah, I, I love the content. I really encourage everybody to go subscribe over on YouTube. And um, and I guess at this point, we're recording this first week of October. How many? You probably have ten, a dozen episodes or less. Uh, or? I've got. I think I'm pushing twenty at this point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So there's a good library to get caught up on and uh, jump in. But uh, so we we did actually did an interview, which hasn't been released yet. It'll be a few weeks, uh, but on leading saints. And we talk about your journey and leadership and your experience with leadership and whatnot. So definitely people should check that out. But um, we've been in touch ever since then. And uh, with General Conference coming up, and I know you're always trying to get you know exposed to the Latter-day Saint world. And so I asked you, uh, you going to watch conference or whatnot? And then I guess somebody helped you get out here and got you a few tickets to conference. So you actually attended in person. What's the story I, behind how you got yeah. out here? Uh, well, it was the Tuesday before conference and a friend of mine from out there was like, Hey, I think I can make this happen. Um, so yeah, I flew out there on Friday evening, um, went to, this is the place and got some rest. And then it was a whirlwind on Saturday. Um, went to the conference that was, and I've never even been to Latter-day Saint like church service. So this was like my very yeah. first right. anything. So um, what were you like ex expecting like this thing to be this conference? What did you expect it to be? Um, we have conferences and councils like this in the Protestant world um, quite regularly. We have it on a national level with denominations that they'll do either every year, or every other year where, you know, pretty much everybody within the denomination will converge. And it usually changes the location for a lot of denominations, but we also do it district wide. So the district that I'm a part of in my denomination is like all of Illinois and Indiana. So I'm kind of familiar with the concept and the idea of a, what we would sometimes just call a general council or conference. So I was expecting something like that, but I had seen enough clips from past conferences to realize or to know that it's, there are more talks given. It's a little bit more of like a teaching or presentation as opposed to sometimes whenever we do conferences, there's like votes and stuff like that, which I'm sure you guys have uh, sessions that do that as well. So um, I was I was kind of expecting that. But on the other hand, I didn't know what to expect. So it was a little yeah. it was a little bit nerve wracking. I talk about this a little bit in the video that I'm releasing today uh, of me kind of chronicling that journey. And one of the reasons why it's nerve wracking is because not only is it a context I'm not familiar with, but as a pastor, I usually go into any given service with a pretty good grip on what is happening. I'm either a part of it or I've been a part of enough of them and I know exactly what I what to expect when I walk in. So to have no idea was definitely an unfamiliar feeling for me. Yeah. And even to the little details, we just assume like um, making sure that you were in a shirt and tie. I mean, were you planning on just going in? in <laughs> I wasn't going to go in street clothes, but I actually, just so you know, I actually shout you out a couple times in this video because oh, your good. help and your tips were, were super helpful. Um, I, I would not have gone in, uh, you know, shorts and a Radiohead t-shirt, but I'm, I probably still would have embarrassed myself a little bit. So I was <laughs> very grateful that you were like, Hey, make sure you uh, dress pretty nice. I'm like, Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, that, that's great. And then, um, you know, so you went to Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. So I'm like racking my brain, like, how can I help Jeff be prepared? And I was like, oh, the Saturday afternoon, they're going to do sustaining votes. Right. You don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. Or I mean, what was that experience like? Just or yeah. did you understand what was going on? Or I did. Yeah, we do. We do similar things. It's not exactly the same, but we 
we will uh, do gestures of affirmation when certain leaders are put in place. Um, I will say the funny thing about it was um, uh, for that second session, I was sitting pretty close. I was sitting yeah. pretty far up front. And um, this kid sitting next to me, clearly pretty, you know, devout Latter-day Saint, whenever they would ask for the hands to raise and, you know, the entire room is raising their right hand. And I wasn't. Each time uh-huh. he would like look at me progressively more and more. So by the by the time we got to like the third or fourth thing, he's like staring straight at me like, why aren't you raising your hand? And I was we just got a like, bowl. yeah, right. <laughs> he's probably expecting me to stand up and start protesting at some point. But yeah. um, I also, I wasn't raising my hand whenever it was, if anybody's opposed. So, um, and then he and I had, we, we exchanged a few comments too after one of the talks that I thought was really good. So it was okay. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I was watching that, uh, you know, remotely and that there weren't any shouts of protest during that, were there? I was warned that there could be. And in, in yeah. both sessions that I was in, there, there were no protests. Yeah, we've had that where you can even hear it on TV where people shout like in opposition and it's yeah. sort of this awkward moment as as whoever is, you know, reading off the names just moves on and <laughs> Sure. So, nice. So, um so let's just talk about the 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 conference itself, the sessions, like being there, I mean, uh you sort of expected that type of of cadence or uh was I'm always worried like, you know, you see some other evangelical or, or Protestant uh you know, meetings and there, there's some energy or there's a slide presentation or the guys up there, you know, you know, really getting into it and walking yeah. the stage. And sometimes I, I wonder if people see our, the cadence of general conference be like, this is really dry and boring. I mean, what did you think of that? It, it was definitely more subdued than what I'm used to. Um, and, but part of that has to do with the fact that in the evangelical church, especially we, we are trained communicators. Like we go to school and we get degrees not only in biblical studies and theology, mm-hmm. but also communication and, and presenting things. Because, I mean, uh, every week, you know, I'm, I'm spending between 12 and 20 hours, sometimes more, preparing sermons and crafting what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it. And that's on a weekly basis. So that communication muscle can get pretty strong. But that's actually something that I thought was kind of endearing about the speakers at conference because, mm-hmm. you know, they're from the 70, they're from the 12. And yet the person who was with me was saying, oh, that guy was a heart surgeon. Oh, this person's a lawyer. So I was like, oh, so these individuals really, they're, they're not trained speakers, public speakers. They are mm-hmm. from the genuineness of their heart, communicating what they feel they want to communicate in a 10 to 15 minute um, talk. And um, so that rhythm, I, I got used to it pretty, pretty quick. I thought there was a lot of insight shared. You know, one of the things that stuck out to me was that there was really only one talk between both sessions that actually felt like a sermon to me. Because mm. whenever we go to anything in the Protestant or evangelical church, you're expecting the talks for the most part to be what we would call either a devotional or a sermon. So something mm-hmm. that's very focused on a passage of scripture, understanding it and then applying it. And it was um, McConkie, his... his uh, oh, yeah look at Mark chapter two and the individual that was lowered through the roof was the closest thing to a sermon that I heard the entire time. Mm-hmm. Everything else felt a little bit more just like kind of antidotes and um, insightful thoughts about certain aspects of Latter-day Saint faith. Yeah. And uh, Elder McConkie, he was just called as a 70. So that was his first time really the world had, <clears throat> had heard from him. And and I think many that I was watching with thought, man, he'll be a good one to hear again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I actually leaned over to my friend. I was like, that right there was a sermon like that. Yeah. Was, I thought it was well done for sure. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, um, anything else as far as just, you know, walking into the conference center, was it, is it, I mean, it's obviously a remarkable building and, and, but maybe it's similar to what you've already experienced or any other high points of the experience in general. The high point to the experience was something that you, you technically, um, gave me a heads up on that I was not expecting and that is that the activity outside the conference center was almost as intriguing as the activity inside the conference center. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get why so many Latter-day Saints are so um, anticipatory when it comes to hearing the talks, because like I said, you know, at any Protestant or evangelical church, you hear a 30 to 50 minute sermon every single week. Um, whereas general conference really is the only time those two times throughout the year where you're going to hear really directly from a lot of the leadership at the church. So I, I get, I get why, you know, I think I had one of my, um, 
my followers say, this is going to be a spiritual feast. And I get it because this is a time when you hear from your leadership. But outside the conference center was just fascinating to me. It was a it was much more of a charged atmosphere than I was expecting. Because, you know, Latter-day Saints are relatively subdued and amicable people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I struggled, to be honest with you, with the number of Protestants or, you know, Christians who are out there with their signs, who are yelling. I don't necessarily get on board with the whole thing of standing, you know, kind of jumping in front of people who are trying to walk into the conference center to give them tracks and all that other stuff. I'm not saying I'm opposed to that. It's just not really uh-huh. my approach. But I, I am opposed to the people who stand out there with their signs screaming hell and fire and brimstone to people. Um, I, 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 as an evangelical, was really uncomfortable. I was super intimidated. And I actually, I put this in the video I, I'm releasing about General Conference. I actually confronted um, one of my fellow evangelical brothers and had, it was about a 10 minute conversation. I only put about a minute of it in the video, but um, I, I don't understand how anyone can look at, at how Jesus encountered people, encountered the crowds, encountered individuals, and how there's anything invitational about screaming mm-hmm. in people's faces. Um, you know, uh, there's a whole other conversation as to whether Latter-day Saints souls are in peril. So, okay. Sure. Right. When it comes yeah. to your method, um, in my humble opinion, that ain't it. And that was, <laughs> that was really um, intriguing and, and kind of captivated me. Yeah. And I mean, was there's this feeling like these are, these are my people, right? Like these are my fellow ah. evangelicals or did, are they? Did you, yeah. I don't know. Like how do you, how do you interpret that or filter that? Probably the same way that you filter and interpret people within the Latter-day Saint church that have views that stray from yeah. orthodoxy or even some of the splinter groups that yeah. have unique views, probably the same way. It's like, yeah, I get that we have commonalities, but I, I don't really feel akin to people who are, are justifying screaming um, at people because yeah. they believe differently. And obviously some of this will be in the, the video uh, that you released, but did, as you approach that individual, I assume he thought you were a Latter-day Saint, right? Did. It was, did it take a while for you to convince him? One of my, one of my evangelical friends saw a picture of me and she's like, dude, you look like a 19 year old return missionary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because I had my suit. It looked, you know, I looked like a Latter-day Saint going to conference. Yeah. So when I told him that I was an evangelical pastor, he was like, oh, oh yeah, oh, OK, all right. And he's actually from um, Buffalo, which is where my wife and all of my family is from, even though we're, we live in St. Louis. So that we had a little bit of an icebreaker moment talking about the bills. But once I got into the fact that, you know, I felt that his approach was super off-putting, he got not adversarial, but got pretty passionate. So it got heated then. I don't know if I'd say heated. I think passionate probably is the best word. Okay. All right. Because, you know, we walked away. I said, I don't agree with you. Thanks for hearing me out. Go bills and fist bumped them and walked away. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cool. I'm curious. I'm trying to think of some talks. I was sort of, you were on my mind a little bit as, as I was listening to different talks, like I believe Elder Rasband, one of the members of the Quorum of the Twelve, really hit the Book of Mormon hard. You know, like this is, you know, and statements like this is the book, like and the most correct book. Yeah, yeah, right. And referencing Joseph Smith, those statements and whatnot, and uh, like, how how do you sit in that? Is it are, are you feeling like the Bible's being dismissed, or like what what's going through your mind as you hear those those strong Book of Mormon focused talks? Well, it's, it's really fascinating that you're, you're zeroing in on that talk in particular because um, this video that I'm releasing, half of it is me vlogging around Conference Center and going. The other half of it is me back in my setting um, actually giving my thoughts. And that was one talk that I kind of zeroed in on. Um, I, I, I just – maybe I'll put it this way. I, I've recently been going through a study on baptism and looking at the unbelievably insightful harmony that exists between Genesis and Exodus and Jesus's teachings in the New Testament um, and how the Lord is just so profoundly connects so many dots throughout the Old and the New Testament. 
it's mm-hmm. it's really moving to me um and to hear someone make a comment like the book of mormon is the most correct book and that those without the book of mormon are without the full truth mm-hmm. um i love you guys and i'm i'm gonna stick with you and keep learning with you i just adamantly disagree with that yeah um it doesn't it doesn't i don't adamantly disagree with it from the standpoint of it makes me angry but yeah. that i feel so passionate about um the trustworthiness the sufficiency and the authority that does exist um in the scriptures alone so yeah that's that's a pretty yeah. significant diverging point for me but uh, i appreciated hearing not only his passion for the Book of Mormon, but how it integrates into his own personal testimony. And I think that that was a really important takeaway I took from that talk. Yeah. Do you feel there was enough emphasis just on Jesus Christ in general? Absolutely. That was one of the things that struck me the most. I mean, it was Jesus, everything, which I loved. Now, is Jesus our savior for the purpose of reconcile relationship with God or exaltation? I think a Latter-day Saint would say yes both. And I would as well. But I think Latter-day Saints put a little bit more of the emphasis on thank God for Jesus, because this will allow us to move through exaltation, as opposed to I say, thank God for Jesus, because he brings us back to God, which is our rightful place. Um, So, but but regardless, he is our savior. He is our only hope. There was one individual in the second session that was talking about how if it were not for Christ's sacrifice, we would be lost. We would, we would not have Mm -hmm. any hope. Um, most of the statements that were made about Jesus, not associated with the book of Mormon, but most of the statements made about Jesus, not only would I agree with, but I would echo for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Help me a little bit on, you use those two phrases like exaltation and returning. Like when you say that in my, with my Latter-day Saint background, it sounds like you're saying the same thing. Sure. Maybe unpack that a little bit more for me to understand. I love that you're asking that. Yeah. yeah, because as I've talked to even some of my Protestant friends, that's actually how they we we're kind of learning to understand that salvation and exaltation are almost the same thing in Latter Day Saint uh, teaching, whereas we we see them as distinct. Um, salvation is really all about relational reconciliation with God when it comes to what Jesus did on the cross. It was about writing that relationship. It was about redemption, bringing us um, out of a fallen state into a restored state um, and and out of the kingdom of darkness and the power of Satan into the kingdom of light with the power of God. And I mean, that is, that is, uh, that is where our, our hope is, but exaltation is sort of subsequent. We are saved, we are restored, but then exaltation really is more about resurrection um, receiving glorified bodies and being restored into God's actual presence at the end of all things in the new heavens and the new earth and us dwelling with him forever. Um, mm-hmm. Exaltation, I think, has a little bit more of a progressive idea within the Latter-day Saint Church where there's going to be ongoing progression, ongoing exaltation, ongoing activity that leads to ongoing exaltation throughout the afterlife. and. Mm-hmm. We leave that in the realm of mystery uh, and say that gotcha. really the finish line is just being back in God's presence, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I've heard it framed a lot like, uh, you know, the law of justification and sanctification that, you know, and which were saved through Christ's grace in both those contexts. Uh, you know, obviously Christ justifies us and then um, we are sanctified by him inviting us into a covenant path where, yeah, there are some some things we're doing, not in order to save ourselves or exalt ourselves, but we're, we're entering into his model so that we can develop and progress. Um, not forever. I think sure. that, that's been a debate. Um, the elder McConkie back in the day, another elder McConkie right. kind of shut down that God is not progressing. Like he is right. complete and full, but, uh, yeah. So th- those, th- it's interesting to hear you, um, and uh, articulate that. And I do feel like, just our, our traditions and the way um, we articulate things, we don't do a good job of bringing Christ's role into that. It can it can it can be interpreted like, and that's why you guys got to do stuff, or you know, I, sure. I don't know. I think we did a good job there. But 
Yeah. Well, I, I feel that, that that message is becoming a little bit clearer the more I hear some of the teachings. And I mean, honestly, one of the places where I'm at right now is any critique that evangelicals or Protestants have toward Latter-day Saints. Um, a lot of we uh, will apply those same critiques and complaints toward the Catholic Church. Mm. And yet we, for the most part, believe that Catholics and Protestants stand in the same place before God. And that we're, as long as you have a restored relationship with Jesus, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Mm, so that's where I'm at a really interesting point on this journey where it's like, well, any critique that we can give about Latter-day Saints, um, at what point, you know, David Snell asks this on a recent episode of Saints Unscripted, at what does it take for you to be, to be not a Christian? At what point aren't you a Christian? Oh, yeah. And I'm I'm kind of swimming in that tension right now. The more I'm hearing the testimony of Latter Day Saints, I can't tell you that I've got a black and white conclusive answer, but I'm definitely in that headspace right now. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, do you obviously? You know, we've talked about in our uh, leading saints interview about uh, your plans to read the Book of Mormon. You've not necessarily read it cover to cover, but nor are you resisting it. It's just not yet come up, or you haven't taken the time to do that. D did you walk away feeling like you're more uh, in intrigued or curious to read the Book of Mormon? Not really. No, yeah. I'm still going to do it. And I, right. if anything, I I felt um, like I need to make it a priority sooner than later, which I've I've been meaning to do it as well. It's just that some yeah. of this has to come down to just like life things. I want to make sure I've got time to really focus right. on it. Yeah. But um, no, I don't. I don't know if I felt that there was anything illuminated in my heart or in my mind hearing all the talks that made me feel uh, a greater level of, of urgency on a spiritual level. Um, but I, but I am recognizing more and more how important it is and that I, I do need to read it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other, like outside of that, just what would, how would you summarize just your basic, like walking out after the second session, what changed in you or what encouraged you or maybe what discouraged you? Like, what was the general uh, transformation that you had, good or bad? Um, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. The Latter-day Saint friend of mine that helped make this happen, that I spent the better part of that 24 hours with, was the most impacting thing about that trip. This is a convinced um, Latter-day Saint, um, devout, he's grown up in Utah and he was kind and he was um, patient and he was thoughtful. And we learned about each other's lives and our beliefs. We asked each other difficult questions and truly walked away closer than I really ever expected. So we're wow. on a, on a, a organizational standpoint and even maybe on a worship uh, mode standpoint, it was really enlightening to be at the conference. That relational connection um, was the most meaningful thing to me and has put me in a more thought provoking place than, than anything. So yeah, love th it. that's why I'm really valuing the open handedness of a lot of Latter-day Saints to engage with me and to, to build relationships. Um, I, I've appreciated your engagement, David Snell, Good. this friend who, I'm going to, I'm going to, he's going to remain nameless right now because he's, sure. he wants to, to, to do that. But it's, that's, that's probably the, the most impactful thing so far for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, and I mentioned a little bit of this on the other interview we did, but, um, you know, we're just speaking as latter day saying, I'm so grateful someone like you is, is interested in, in, and of course, you know, we, just our deep faith tradition, we love the stories of like, oh, the guy, you know, checked us out and now he's a, you know, stake president speaking in this or that conference or, you know, like mm -hmm. we, we love put, printing those, those stories. And of course, as you walk more and more into our community, you're going to be hit up with a lot of invitations, right? Like yeah. reading the Book of Mormon or whatever. And, and of course, I would always extend that, that you read the Book of Mormon but, and not with a skeptical eye, but really asking is this scripture, you know, is it, sure. is it actual, uh, revelation from God and whatnot? So those will come, but at the end of the day, I just appreciate your interest in, in our community and our faith that you are, that you're so respectful, that you recognize that where people do maybe, um, uh, offend us at times with standing out and attacking us for just striving to follow Jesus Christ and in, in the way that we know and the way we understand and the way we believe, 
I, rec- I, I just so much appreciate that, that kindness and that you would be willing to attend a conference and that you're willing to read the book more and that you're willing to go to a, one of our church services with, you know, no, with no transaction in mind, just saying, I just want to learn more about you people. So, uh, thank you for doing that. Keep it up and let, let us know how we can keep promoting what you're doing. I, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm, I, I love that this is technically still the beginning of this journey and so many exciting opportunities so far and ahead. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for the reception and conversation and hospitality that everybody seems to be showing me within the church. So this is a really um, not only enjoyable, but meaningful journey. Cool. All right. Yeah. Give us one more plug if people want to check out your videos and especially this, this one that's about to be released or yes. will probably be released once this, this hits. Yeah. Uh, where yep. should they go to find out? So um, just go to youtube.com slash hello saints. And if you just search hello saints on Instagram, um, you'll find me there as well. But uh, yeah, watch the videos. Uh, feel free to DM me. Although I, I did have a video that got a lot of views and so I'm getting a ton of people are reaching out to me on a daily basis. It was like every, you know, once or twice a week, but now it's more frequently than that. So I, I really do try to respond to people. So if you reach out, I'll do my best. But either way, just uh, going into the videos with a reciprocal open heart, um, the way that I'm trying to, to, to present the videos, um, I, would, I would love it if you checked them out and, and let me know what you think. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely do that. I, I guess I am still kind of frustrated. That you, you got better tickets than I've ever gotten the chance of getting. Like you were so I've been close. getting that a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that a lot though because uh, Latter Day Saints will be like, "Oh, you've been to Nauvoo and Palmyra," and I actually just shot a video on Independence that I haven't released yet. Like, I've been to Latter Day Saint my whole life and I've not been to those places. So it's like, sorry. You're uh, you're what we call a dry Mormon. Uh, uh, that, uh, is that what that you know, is? You're, you've done every, you've checked all the boxes except baptism, and that's okay. You have no pressure okay. here, but uh, yeah, right. you can count yourself amongst our people. So, all right. Well, I appreciate being. I, I appreciate the guest pass for sure. <laughs> Good. Yep. Perfect. Yeah.